And we're back for game two in this best of three lower bracket showdown here in Dota Pit North America qualifier action. It's Complexity Gaming taking on Team NP. And man, Complexity had a rough start. Looked like NP was just going to calmly cruise to a victory. Then they clawed their way back in. They turned a 4K early game deficit into a 10K, 10K uh, mid game advantage. And then they threw it all away. Two bad team fights, about a 25,000 plus gold swing. And all of a sudden, NP won the game just like that. I'm LD. I'm joined here uh, by CCNC. And man, if this team doesn't tilt, I'll be very impressed because that is one hell of a way to lose a game. Yeah, like like we talked about, it's just a lineup where if Slark isn't just obscenely far ahead, and he was very far ahead. Wow, the Slark first two. Um, if if Slark isn't just crazy far ahead, like you just can't walk into those heroes. Their fight manage is so strong, and Slark a hero that needs to be able to to lock onto one of the squishier supports and kill them. But if your supports are avid on ET, the ET just waits until you um, pop Dark Pack, then he stomps you and walks away, just constantly kiting the Slark and forcing him to use his ult um, defensively. And then he's just stranded in the middle of nowhere, MSS getting that clutch Orchid, and just costing them a couple of fights. The relocate just being a split second too late. Both fights and the cores dropping like flies. Moo actually went for the Shivas instead of a BKB that game. So not really having much impact after the really nice uh, early game that him and Z Freak had. And just costing them the game. Yeah, it certainly did that. So looking at the draft here, uh, first overall pick Batrider again. Uh, last time they went for the IO. This time they grabbed the Slark first phase. And... NP seen the Batrider, they grab Lifestealer Murana, so uh, thoughts on the Lifestealer pick? I guess that's the more unusual one. We have seen a lot of teams run Lifestealer 1v1 against Batrider. Seems like he does pretty well in the matchup, uh, so I'm not sure if that's the reasoning behind it. It's someone who doesn't need help, or why do, why do you think Lifestealer first phase like this? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that if you pick some, like, initiating offline, you pick a Slaughter, you pick a Sand King, something like that, they aren't going to ban Lifesteal, right? Because it pairs really well with that. But if you take the Lifestealer first, then you can you know, pick any one of those uh, offliners afterward, you pick one of those initiators, and they can't ban them all out. I think it's part of it, and so I guess NP just really wanting the Lifestealer this draft, um, you know, going to play that style of getting the pickoffs, those early fights, you know, finding the skirmish, just, just finding non-stop with the Lifestealer bombs. And, you know, if you do want to play that style, you have to pick the Lifestealer first phase because it'll always get second phase banned. So, speaking of Lifestealer partners, uh, Storm is out there. Uh, we'll have to see if it's actually as good of a Storm game. I mean, they already do have the Mirana, so if Envy's playing that, then maybe we don't see it. Uh, could still be like a safe lane Mirana, off lane life stealer. I mean, they've got some flexibility with these picks, but complexity, they'll ban something that's a little more solid in the team fights. They'll remove the Slardar here, so taking away some Roshan potential, uh, as well as a hero that can provide a very bursty vehicle for the life stealer. Yep, still the axe in the pool, though. Although, I don't think NP really favors that hero that much. Maybe MSS isn't like playing it, maybe they don't think it fits their style, but hasn't. I haven't seen MSS really play the Axe that much, really favors the Slaughter, the Beastmaster, the Timbersaw, one of his best heroes, but almost everyone, first two bands, the Timbersaw. So NP not really getting their hands on that hero much, so I'm curious to see if they will go for the Axe, as it's pretty good versus the Slark. Um, one of the bigger issues with that hero is that it just kind of gets destroyed by Batrider in lane. Um, very, very easy to kill the Axe if a support roams in, so I'm curious to see what they will go for that, and if not, what other offlane or they'll go for. Maybe a Legion Commander? Uh, here that's pretty good versus Slark. Nice versus Batrider as well, so maybe looking towards that a little later in the draft. Guess we'll see. NP, third pick. Hmm. What do they want here? Don't have, don't really have much in the way of tools for the Slark so far. So there's Disruptor out there. Uh, no, they're going to get the Ogre, just a stable laning support. Uh, so when you can control and try to win these early engagements... Uh, Bloodlust, obviously, pretty good with both of these guys as well. Oracle. Yeah, and also one of the nicer heroes versus the Slark because you do, you know, body him in the lane. The Bloodlust, very nice, sword. helping your heroes kite the Slark, and the Void comes out. Probably one of the best heroes in the game versus Slark. The the super disable that, you know, uncounterable by the, by the Slark. Don't can't buy a BKB, can't buy a Lincoln's. Your ult does nothing. Dark Pack does nothing. So, very nice versus the Slark. And also hero that can lane okay versus the Batrider. Um, don't really have too much kill potential on him. So 
probably going to uh, to stifle the the Muzi freak dual lane that they almost always do. Yes, and complexity. They do have an Oracle here, but not really the best support to have against the Chrono uh, compared to, like, say, Avenge or Shadow Demon, who can just straight up, you know, prevent teammates from even taking damage during that time uh, by either swapping them out or disrupting them. So, Carl grabbing the Oracle. Uh, still, there are, I guess, some like what 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 is out there to deal with this Chrono Spirit? <laughs> the main thing that comes to mind would be the Naga. But she's already been banned by Call. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's the Kanka that they may try and go for, um, but Kanka not very good versus the Life Stealer. Um, decent versus the Bat Rider. So I mean, it's one of his signature heroes. The Freak typically playing, you know, the Kanka, the Wisp, something like that. Um, not really sure what they're going to go for, but I would assume it'd be one of those two. I really worry for Complexity's safe lane again, though. Like this uh, Ogre Magi. Faceless Void is going to just absolutely crush the Slark Oracle with uh, the damage nerfs to the Oracle over the past few patches, and just some small nerfs adding up. The hero is very, very weak in a in a dual lane versus dual lane scenario. If it's not a scenario where he's able to threaten kills on the offliner, you know, solo offliner, then he turns into just this very weak support that has super low damage until level three and is not able to trade well at all. Oh, complexity seem a little flummoxed by this. Really eating into reserve time here. Didn't have like a rapid response ready. And you know, one thing I do like is I like the fact that NP is starting to mix it up a little bit in the draft, Quinn. Like we saw them go for that identical opening every game uh, the other day with the Sven Invoker. Uh, and they've shown two different looks here in, in only two games. Uh, still some, you know, pieces that remain the same. And, you know, it's not like they're just randomly picking shit for the f sake of it being different, but it. It's making it a lot tougher on Complexity, as they're pretty much out of reserve time now. They, well, they're going to have to pick something. What's it going to be? Yeah, Cancel probably not sure what he wants. They're going to give him the Ursa. Yeah, I mean, Ursa, he's tanky. He's good against Lifestealer. He's good against Void in lane. They do have three melee heroes, but you still you still worry about having another melee hero against Chronosphere at the same time. And uh, obviously, for as far as the Marana goes, she's a... Much better at being elusive versus him. Yeah, the Slark and the Ursa also not the best dual core. Uh, both the heroes sort of do the same thing, have very similar timings. The Ursa sort of wants to sit in lane until he gets his Blink Dagger. The Slark wants to sit in lane until he gets his Shadow Blade. They both initiate on squishy supports and try and burst them down, or cores if they have his disables to back them up. So you don't typically want both of your cores or two of your cores to be doing very similar things as. It's, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of answered in the same way, and NP having the Chrono to counter both of those heroes quite well. They have a lot of burst damage as well, and the, the Bloodlust, good versus the Slark and the Ursas, adds quite a bit of kiting potential and a very tanky support that's not easy to burst down. Well, Spirit Breaker banned out. Uh, definitely a nice hero versus Life Stealer, uh, and would allow them to just go deep for some early kills, so certainly not a popular meta pick, but could see him being a nuisance, uh, especially if they want to be split pushing a lot for, say, Envy or potentially to scout out any Moonlight Shadow ganks around the map. So that will be the Disruptor ban. I mean, probably the best support versus Slark, or certainly one of the few. Yeah, also amazing versus the Ursa as well. Both of those heroes relying on their ults. And just their spells in general. Look at this! I saw this hero twice earlier today. Uh, well, I say today. It was like almost last night for a lot of you guys from North America. But uh, Faceless, or sorry, uh, MVP ran it. MVP ran it twice. Offlane Pudge uh, was what they did. This looks like a support Pudge, though. Yeah, it'll probably be the Bat Rider and the Pudge playing around the dual offlane. Complexity tends to be very, very predictable with their lanes. It's almost always... Cancel with a reasonably self-sufficient mid. Justin on a pretty farmy heavy carry. Swindles on the hard like eight, and then uh, Z Freak and Moo doing the dual offline. I would assume that's what they're gonna do here as well. Ten well, NP, not sure if they expected a pudge pick. Uh, not sure how worried they are about it either. They're gonna grab the Elder Titan, and against three melee heroes, Bat Rider kind of has to be in the middle of the fight. That stomp could prove to be a huge nuisance. Um, I wonder if MSS can repeat his performance. Like, that Beastmaster was just unbelievable. Not just the Orchid pickup, which helped cinch the game, but 
I think he was 17, 1, and 9. He was the one taking on all the early towers. He was always scouting out the Batrider. He was finding solo kills. He had the crucial pickoffs in a lot of the team fights. Can he have that same kind of impact this time around on the Void? That's a, a big question for me. Yeah, I'll have to see. It is definitely a very good Void game. Um, only really ways they'd kill him are Lasso or him getting hooked into uh, in Dismember. Otherwise, there's not really any lockdown, and the Chrono is just so good this game. Like, NP's large-scale team fight is insane if they can get their spells off in uh, in a coordinated fight. The Chrono into the Stomp, the Potom double Starfall, and the Life Stealer burst on, you know, maybe someone caught on the edge of the Chrono or focusing his support down while the cores are locked down. So, I definitely, I think MP has won the draft again. <laughs> Just uh, getting Swindle's head a little bit. You know, gotta gotta make sure you save your bathroom break for the end of the draft. That, that's a legitimate strategy, I think. After that that first game, I mean, having... hey, if a team is if a team is triggered that much by something like a a thirty second pause, then you know, I'm not yeah. gonna say it's like the it's a little dirty maybe, but hey, it's it's within the rules, it's allowed, and and why the hell not? It's like uh, it's sort of equivalent to like call like fake calling GGs in pubs. Yeah, swindles with a ready before they say they are. <laughs> uh, Use I, your. I I I just I I would love to know that like there was actually no one in the bathroom and they're just saying washer. <laughs> <laughs> they use their ten minutes of pause time in thirty second inc increments across yeah. the game. Bathroom fire, dog ate my homework. <laughs> I mean, what what else can NP come up with here to to get in this out? door? Door pizza. <laughs> now, for those who, who missed it, uh, I think it was before the remake even in game one. Uh, I don't know if I showed the lobby chat, but we had to remake because there's some weird bug. Uh, and I forget, like, 1437 was, like, under the river. It was really weird. Uh, he spawned not in the fountain. And Swindles was like, I don't want to be up past midnight. This day is already going to be really long. So he was, like, already a little crotchety <laughs> even before the game began. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure NP actually had someone in the bathroom, but. It's it's funnier to think that they didn't. Uh, they they are theory crafters, so yeah, you know, the out of game meta is there's as much room for innovation there as in game. Oh, what an arrow! Beautiful snipe by EE. Now the spirit gonna come out. They get that ignite on him, and even with the bootsy freak, might be in trouble here. Oh, they got the open wounds. I think he's done, so man. He does oh. get the deny though, Z freak. What a god. Still NP. Happy to have irritated him, but man, they really wanted that first blood. Yeah, that's actually pretty big. I only used his uh, open wounds and. Okay, wait. Oh, they're doing the Slark mid. Okay. I thought it would be Ursa mid for sure. Yeah, so, looks like they are doing the Slark mid. A hero that pairs quite well up against the bottom. I guess Ursa uh, is better at bullying the Void than, than the, the Slark as well as the other thing. Yeah, this this lane switch up is really really smart because their bot lane was going to get trashed. The mid lane was going to break even. Instead, the the bot lane should win quite quite hard, and Justin will have a nice time in the mid lane as well. The Slark having really good starting damage, so very hard for the bottom of the last tip versus that. And if any support ever comes in, the pounce versus the bottom early on, super super deadly. So I'm going to go arrow creep off in the woods here, and Mu just starting straight woods. He's not even attempting to lane top up against the. The life stealer ogre. He, he doesn't want to risk it, so may head up there a bit later once he. Oh, ah, no, sorry, he's got a completed iron talent. Yeah, he's just he's just hitting creeps in the jungle. But they have somewhat prepared for this with an observer ward to scout out any potential stacks. So he did go for napalm early here, which di didn't used to be like the old jungle bat right away. But you know, I guess if you have an iron talent, it works out pretty well. Yeah, he uh, one of the other games. I think it was versus EG. He went for boots in the jungle, and, and then you know I think Universe had a free lane for a little bit. So sort of figuring out some of those like odd builds. He I think he couldn't decide whether he wanted to go to the jungle or not. So getting the boots instead of the iron talent. But this game realizing before they head out to the lanes that you know can't really be up in this top lane. I'm gonna commit to the iron talent and you know get up some of that safe farm in the jungle, not risking any deaths. Yeah, so early on here, Slark doing quite well in the mid lane. Already with the, the poor man shield, not particularly easy for Murana to harass with relatively low HP. I do want to point out, Envy is already looking to contest this Bat Rider. No, he has a ward. He's going to just arrow a, a single Ice Ogre. Not really all that effective. Not worth all that much, but... 
Oh. Playing with Justin. Little fish man, not gonna be able to find the kill. Or uh, the, the grab there on the pounce, I should say. But you can even see 1437 looking to roam in. Moo, though, he's already level 3 and changed. Our Talon paying off, and 1437 unable to leech that XP. Thinks, looks like he might have been going for a courier snipe, but the timing isn't working out for him. Yeah, NP very happy with the top line going as well. Um, obviously, with the bat rider not there, Aoya player like we talked about in previous series really likes to have a good start. Um, thrives while he's ahead and not the best player while he's behind. So is having this free lane, very good at utilizing utilizing his pulls. Is going to get the stack now. So the life two are going to have a, a very good start and. Complexity forced to do this tri lane down here, not able to do their signature Mu and Z Freak up at the top lane. So, MS is actually getting quite a surprising amount 10 CS compared to the 12 of the Ursa. So, oh, uh, they do find him though. They really need to force out that time walk if they want to try and get the kill. But he's very patient to hold on to it, so they can't follow up with the hook. You hook before it, and he's just going to jump away. And so, as long as MSS doesn't overreact, I don't really think they get a kill in that lane. Maybe could try for a go on Envy mid if they're able to pounce and, as you pointed out last game, prevent him from leaping. But we're not seeing the the Pudge really do all that much. Yep, only level 2 at this point. They're, you know, doing the pulls together, so having some decent levels. 3 on the Oracle and almost 3 on the Pudge. Um, NP having the 3 on the Ogre, but only level 2 on the uh, Elder Titan. So a little bit ahead on the supports from some of those pulls, but... I think MSS having a, a better game than maybe he should. Uh, it's definitely a game where Void can easily thrive if he can get some of those survivability items up, get the flies, the early treads. It's very tanky and complexity. Unless they get a, an early blink lasso or the Pudge gets a lucky hook and a dismember. Not really a way they can kill him. Yeah, Mu is playing pretty efficiently as far as his own economy. Stacking this big uh, jungle camp top. He's already level 5 at 4 minutes with the Iron Talon. And looks like he is going to complete the Tranquil Boot, so it could be a fast blink at this rate, unless NP actually look to gank him. And NP don't really have nearly as good lasso counters as they did last game. Like last game, they had they had the Abaddon with an early Aether Lens and Avenge and the Beastmaster. This game, I guess the Elder Titan Stomp could be considered like a slight counter if he's ready, but there's a lot more room for Mu to thrive if he has this kind of an opening. Yeah, E actually doing quite well in this mid lane after the uh, early start of Justin having uh, being up a few CS. E went to the the jungle early on. I've seen him do that uh, quite a bit recently on Potom. He almost always goes to the hard camp and arrows the big creep and then comes back to lane. He missed one or two creeps, but getting the over 100 XP from the big creep ends up being uh, worth it in the end. So a nice uh, sort of innovation for me, E, known for those theory crafting plays and having caught up and even quite a bit ahead of the Slark now. So having the three points in the nuke. Slark so can't really go up in Dark Packs, it hurts him uh, hurts him a lot, and then with the Starfall on top, getting the double star, Starfall even as he's a melee here and walks into range of it, so he up 10 CS now. Yeah, good news is now Justin is finally level 6, so can just heal himself up to full over the, the course of uh, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how much damage he's taken, and, and then look to come back into the lane. So with that, Justin shouldn't have to go home at the very least. He does get the free bottle refill from Moo. And he'll hang around. They might even look to go here, though Envy is currently m missing an action as he's busy grabbing the topper in the bottom rune of haste, but that's which uh, SVG will happily snatch up. And MSS just continues to, th to really thrive in the bottom lane. 25 CS. And meanwhile, Owie up at 43. Though they are going to make that move on the middle lane. Lasso deployed, and they try to focus on Envy. The Envy hate is real. That's Z Freak searches with a hook. That that was the story of last game. Like every fight, Envy got focused down. Nothing different happening here. Yeah, cancel actually having to ferry out a second salve down to this bottom line. So having his initial regen, but having to ferry out more as the spirit spam, some of the stomps coming out, and MSS just really just punching him quite a bit. MSS still having his original salve and almost up to the treads. With the chrono coming up soon, could maybe even threaten to kill on him. If uh, maybe the bottom makes a quick rotation or the ogre coming down. Yeah, and Envy does have a Moonlight Shadow available. So it could look to set that initiation up for the Void. Let him save the time walk for a retreat. And they're going to smoke. There they go. They will make that exact move. 
And MSF's not there just yet, though. He He's close to six, but he doesn't have it. He can scout maybe a little bit. Moonlight Shadow not yet deployed. They're going to sweep from top to bottom of your screen. Looking for the wraparound now. Moving to the right and cancel. In an awkward predicament. He is not level six, though. He's got the ultimate. It'll be a tough kill if he gets it off at the right time. The stomp coming in will connect. That's a good way to start the fight. Arrow following it up. And nah, he's not even going to get it off until he's nearly dead. Won't at all. He falls. And all the while, Owie. Happily farming away top lane, but he will now TP mid. Wants to slow down this creep pulling and siege action on the tower. As Envy makes his way back to that lane. Yeah, I'm surprised Cancel didn't sniff that out. The our Envy gone for quite a while mid, and his bottom almost always making these early rotations. And even just in general, uh, Envy is not a player that likes to stay in his lane very often. Isn't known for his you know being amazing in lane, but his early rotations are very very good. So. Surprised Cancel not ready for that, and uh, maybe that comes down to not really being a safe lane player, not used to it, and sort of focused on the laning aspect of it and getting caught by the gang from EE. So, a nice rotation from him. Swindle under pressure now as well. Yeah, it's getting decent levels here, hits level 5, so he's gonna rev up the Fortune's End, gets the initial nuke all on Envy, but no follow up. And so far, it's been a very quiet game for the Ursa, for the Slark. Hook coming in top, SVG. Not going to get caught by that. Didn't have vision, just happened to dodge the right way. At the same moment, Chrono is online now. Radiant Squad pains it out. They, I'm not sure they actually saw these heroes, but they seem to be suspicious. And they do have A-Ward in the jungle as MSS gets eyes on cancel. They're going to begin this one with the open wounds. They're trying to hold this for the right time. The oh. bubble comes out. Good positioning there, and unfortunately Swindles walked into it. Can he get the heals off? Ursa hooked back to safety. Z Freak to the rescue, and now I think that's it. No, no counterplay really coming in just yet. Justin is moving in, but doesn't really want to run into four heroes. So the first Chrono not connecting. This is a big window for complexity. They'll have about two minutes to try and punish. Yeah, pretty big mistake from Aoi. Uh, not communicating the where he was going to place the Chrono correctly, and. Aoi walking into it, so if he had gotten just two more right clicks off, would have killed the Slark, or not the Slark, the uh, Ursa. But walking into it, and costing that kill, and can make four heroes as well, so the Slark able to farm up top of the net worth now, going for the phase boots again this game, even though they don't have the uh, Ogre, so we'll see if that pays off this game, as opposed to uh, how last game went, but it's a lot of heroes committed with not really that much gained, as well as using the Chrono early on. Yeah, at the same time, though, their cores are farming very well. Two heroes at 45 or so. Lifestealer up at 71, topping the charts. And that is a completed armlet. Uh, nearly ready to come out. Just needs the Blades of Attack. He's got the gold for it. Did stop off for a Reign of Protection here. So we'll see what he wants to build that into. But this is going to be a very fat Lifestealer with some okay vehicles, I guess. Not amazing. Void's decent-ish. Marana's not great because she generally doesn't want to be in the middle of the fight. At least not until it's safe, but regardless, he's big. Yeah, this cancel is really not in a good spot right now on the Ursa. Only 800 gold right now, and you know with that one death, slowing him down quite a bit. An Ursa hero that is just known for one of being the most atrocious heroes from behind, especially versus all the heroes, and he has a lot of kiting spells. The Stomp, very, very good versus the Ursa. Even, even open wounds is a big problem, just preventing him from getting at and sticking on to targets and fights. Yeah, Cancel realizing that going to four points in uh, overpower and looks like or in fury swipes, and so it looks like they are gonna try and do the uh, do Roshan at some at some point. Uh, the Bat Rider and the Pudge playing up top, so I think they're gonna try and force TPs and maybe smoke the Roshan. But uh, NP realizing, I think that uh, that may be their plan, so. Just keeping MSS up here, playing very safe, making sure he doesn't die while they get a whole lot of pressure and damage on this bottom tower. And, and uh, EE already up to 2,500 gold as well, so doesn't look like he's going to go for that phase boots this game and going to go straight for the Ags. Very, very farmed already. Well, complexity. It's been a quiet early game, but the Bat Rider Blink is about to come out. It doesn't look like Moo's going to go for that Arcane Drums build. He recognizes he has to be the initiator. And so the blink will be purchased momentarily. And then the question is, what does he get with it? Owie now, gonna back off in the bottom lane. 
Batrider chilling in the trees, but needs follow-up if he wants to try and find a kill here in the mid lane. They jump into SVG, goes for the TP out, and he's he's away. Complexity. Not a ton of ways to cancel TPs here, especially uh, since so much of it depends on the Pudge, who is not the most mobile hero around the map. They're going to try to go on Z-Freak, but Cancel is baiting this. He comes around the tree line. Z-Freak, though, doesn't have his ultimate. Oh, they just stun him and then run away. Mu with the lasso available, but no, how he's into the creeps and he's out to safety. And he's in the range creep, which is unlikely to die here for some time. So I don't know if they even get the kill. Can try to <laughs> deny these creeps. Uh, yeah, they're doing. Oh, 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 I didn't think about that. All right, well, they get him, but still, it took a lot. That is the blink debut, and NP at least got a kill in return for it. Yeah, at least during that time, Justin firing up, so only 200 gold away from his Shadow Blade, most armed hero in the game, zero deaths, and been utilizing the the jungle camps as well as the mid lane, so quite farmed at this point. If you can get that Shadow Blade, maybe you can look for a play on the ET or the Marana if she's low farming the jungle, but... Do you feel like this is a game that Slark can just take over and dominate? Um, I don't think so. NP as a team is very, very smart about not giving away too many goofy kills. Um, they probably as rare, rarely give away pickoffs. Only three kills in this game so far. And, uh... And a lot of the core is just really unkillable by the Slark, unless they make massive mistakes. So the Life Stealer, you can't pounce him. Obviously, he's not going to die. The Ogre can TP out at any point. Same with the ET and the Potom. Going to have her Ag, so going to be quite high in the HP department. So I don't really know if the Slark can get a lot of crucial pickoffs and then just sort of, like you said, take over the game. But... Oh, MSS. You got to be kidding me, man. No vision, just pure instincts again making it out. The Hulk just... Piercing his model, but it had already completed the time walk wind up and was on its way to safety. Still, Cancel's gonna try to creep in. Not really the hero that can initiate onto this pesky void. Yeah, they're splitting up their farm very, very well right now. SVG taking the bottom lane right there. Uh, Aoi farming the Ancients. And he just sort of going around doing his own thing, opening up a lot of space for their supports. As this game, they realize that complexity is all about bursting the squishy heroes and. NP's team fight is just so much vastly better, so if they can get some of these core items up, get the Ags on uh, EE, which they almost have, they can take these team fights super easily. Here comes the Moonlight Shadow as Envy moves in. He's packing heat here with an Infest Bomb ready to go. Doesn't see a thing right now. Only 1437 creeping up the river. They're about to run into someone. Oh, and it is going to be the Slark. Arrow comes out Infest as well, but he's going to pop his ult. This doesn't look great for NP. Bubble gets dropped. It's a good one. Catching out two heroes on the periphery, but can they focus anyone down? Suddenly, going the other way is going to be the Pudge ultimate, but MSS trying to walk it off the Mask of Madness from Cancel as he gives chase. Can they focus MSS down? They need like two more auto techs, three on the Ursa. They do get that follow-up kill, and they look for more. They're going to find a third kill that fight. They commit everything on a Slark who has a very patient Oracle right behind him, and then he just heals it off, purges off those disables, and immediately turns the fight. Yeah, NP not wanting to give up this top tower, but having that ward down, so spotting Envy beforehand, and making sure that the Slark is the one who's spotted, so... The Oracle not getting jumped at the beginning, nice positioning from Swindles. And, you know, costing the fight, um, they do hold that top tower, so still having all of their towers up. It's not the worst thing possible, Justin pinging a lot, but... Um, he is still close to his Ag, so... Looks like they're just gonna sort of chill, positioning EE up in the top lane now, so able to shove that lane out over and over again and keep complexity from... You know, putting too much pressure on it, MSS down in the bottom lane. So, continuing to just spread their heroes around, making sure they don't get picked off. And even though they do lose that small fight, not too, uh, not too costly. They're just gonna chill and wait for their cooldowns to come back up. Well, cancel. Somehow dodging in between both stomps, the hero as well as the spirit, but still the chase. He's gonna turn. He pops his ultimate. They will stun him. He's hardly lost any health. They're even bringing in the fire dragon. Everyone wants a piece of the bear, and with a secondary stomp, they will jam it in for a kill. Showing that he's difficult to take, but not impossible. Simultaneously, Complexity having a move on the mid lane, looking for Envy. Uh-oh. Let's the arrow go. He's going to miss the hook. <laughs> Just barely off the mark. Yeah, the, the classic two cores. You see each other, and most people just stand around and dance for a while. Yeah, and then 
And then they end up just kind of going straight in the end a lot of the time. I love when someone like zigs and zags and then you just end up like shooting down the middle and hitting them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, EE with clearing that creep wave does have the eggs up now. They do end up losing their top tower even after all that time of trying to defend it, but it is 17 minutes in the game, so you typically see the safe lane towers going down quite a bit earlier than that, as they are very, very hard to defend. And if you aren't prepared, aren't smoking over there before the towers goes down, as they move up there, you know, take a fight like NP tried to do a little bit too late, and complexly turning that fight around, you can see they finally get it down. Yeah, so map control a bit lacking here for complexity in their jungle. As they've already lost both outer towers in the bottom lane. This gives Envy a lot more confidence to leap in mid, start farming, and I definitely I definitely agree with you that we haven't seen all that much out of Ursa. One and two. Hasn't been able to Roche. Always has to worry about getting chronoed. Lifesteal are getting big. With uh, Aoi closing on a potential like Desolator here, maybe. Uh, or we'll have to see. But JK or Justin moving on mid. They get the last off. They're going to focus Envy down. Or not Envy, sorry, Aoi. Uh, and he infests. He tries to make it out, and it looks like he will be able to escape to safety. Turns around, pops back out. Lasso already committed. Even there with the Ursa in decent position, they still can't burst him down. Yeah, the, the life stealer, although. While Ursa typically thought it was one of the better counters versus the uh, Life Stealer, sometimes it can go the other way. As he's a very tanky hero that Ursa needs quite a quite a lot of Fury swipes to be able to stack up enough to kill him, and and it's all physical damage. And Armlet is just so cost efficient as a way to deal with that. Yeah, and after the ulti pop, the uh, the Life Steal E very very good versus the Ursa. Well, there goes your Slark. Not going to be nearly as elusive this game when MSS is on the case. Yeah, Complex does pick up the gem though, so now on the bat right are gonna go look around for some of these wards. Maybe gonna go fish around in their jungle for you know deep wards, but NP actually having very very few wards down, only this one near the uh, top side, uh, not really warding up the jungle that much. So not gonna get too much value out of this gem right now, but as the game goes on, gonna be very very useful versus the uh, Moonlight Shadow. All right, this is a big opportunity for Complexity. They have a blink on the Ursa. They could snowball a fight and get like two, three kills if they're lucky, but unfortunately, they're ganking top where only Envy is there. They would still love the kill. They're going to move in with Cancel right away. Blink, already committed. Hook's there. Z Freak's got him. Reels him in. Takes him down. Gives him the old bite. And they will get the kill, but Envy still buys his BOTs. Still the leader in net worth even after that death. Yeah, I did clean up beforehand as well as getting the tower and. NP meanwhile shoving out the mid lane and EE right before he died had double starfall so the wave top going down not really any objectives Cole getting off of that so trying to make something happen after that kill maybe gonna try and find an initial uh, an additional pick off like you said maybe snowball some kills and get this mid tower which they desperately need to open up the map and allow the smart the slark to uh, move around and pressure the map but doesn't look like they're gonna find anything as NP realizing this is coming and clumping around this hill area on the high ground lurks MSS. That? Does not have his ultimate ready for some time. The time dilation committed. But unfortunately, nothing was on cooldown. So they're just going to be able to chase in easily. Complexity. Not finding the kills. And in comes an angry creep. By the way, Deso is complete on the life stealer, So he is very difficult to deal with. Cancel. Dropping extremely low. And they're going to chase after him here. The Astral Spirit in pursuit. And Swindles. And a bit of danger. He's got a... Look to run away, but that angry ancient black dragon just continues to poke and prod at him bit by bit. Ursa turning around, wanting to have its way with Aoi. Aoi gonna try to man up, but Cancel does get the false promise. The lasso now committed onto Envy. Can he focus him down? He'd love to just use a Fury Swipes here. They will get the kill, bringing down the Marana. Time walk in. There's the Chrono. They don't have an Earth Splitter, though. No Stomp available just yet. Only now getting the Spirit to get it off, and they will get it off with the Hook back. Is going to drag MSS out of the fight. Oh, he walks it off with the time walk. Ooh. So they also end up getting the Batrider kill in the lane. They'll keep more alive. Z-Freak in danger. Multicasted and just chopped down by the zombie claws of the Life Stealer. Now straight back into the pit. That's three for one. Every time Envy dies, man, it's like they get like four times as much back for his death. 
Yeah, he did get last, so they committed a whole lot of their uh, abilities onto the Earth. I think ulting as well, so not having that for the rest of the fight, and without that ult, can't really commit into NPC heroes. MSS with a really nice chrono, and they did clean up Moo on the side. The really, really nice stomp, I think, cut Justin and Moo, so Aoi hit Justin a couple of times, forced the ult, and then going on to Moo, killing, them, killing him and taking the gem. So the gem on Ogre now, and complexity with a couple of wards on, so maybe gonna go look to deward those, and... Not really the kind of fight you want to take as complexity is the lineup with considerably worse team fight. How are you feeling about uh, complexity's chances right now? Ursa's been pretty ineffective. Uh, the Pudge pick, I guess mainly picked as a counter to the Chronosphere, has not really proven to be all that effective. One and three for Z Freak. He's had some decent hooks, but. The overall impact of the hero just hasn't really been there. Do, do you do you see complexity being able to turn this around? And, and if so, how are they going to do it? Uh, I mean, I think they definitely have a, a chance, but a lot of it comes down to just finding these pickoffs. Uh, Envy, just you know, as a player, especially on Marana, tends to push up very, very far, pushes advantage as far as he can, sort of plays it like an Ember style, gets the waves out super far. So going to maybe be looking to predict where Envy is going to be farming. Although, although it is kind of hard, but thinking about, you know, like pushing out lanes, having heroes off the map, and getting set up in random lanes, trying to find pickoffs on Envy split pushing, and then be taking fights after that. Uh, but a lot of it just comes down to complexity getting these pickoffs, is that's what most of the heroes are centered around. They don't really have a good way to uh, take these big skill team fights right now. Well, and the difference between this game and last game, Quinn, is that Envy did not go for the phase boots build with, into a blink. He's gone BOTs right away, so. His ability to farm and just pull ahead of the complexity carries is much more impactful. They're going to move now. AOI 2000 onto Swindles here, but the lasso comes through. Good timing for that. There are Ancient Creeps nearby, though. Oh, what a great chrono! AOI on the outside of it, able to easily take down the Ursa, who has to buy back and look to re-engage, but they've also lost their Batrider out of the picture for some time. AUI almost three shotting Z Freak if he can just get those auto attacks off, and he will do so. Now on to cancel. This could be a dieback. The Stomp gonna wait out the Earth's ultimate, then they can re-engage. They'll pop the Oracle. It's gonna be four heroes here, and AUI's not even gonna die unless Justin can get onto him. He will do so, pouncing back, but Envy on the chase. A triple Star Storm could easily bring him down. So too gonna bash. He gets it right away. Star Storm there, and the Stomp secures it. NP. A full five-man wipe again, and, you know, I said could MSS play as well on the Void as he did on the Beastmaster, and I think it's fair to say, absolutely. This guy has been an absolute beast the last couple of weeks and continues to showcase his versatility and consistency here. Yeah, the way uh, MP, MP played that fight is really, really impressive. Um, one, of the, one of the big things about Oracle is, you know, obviously the hero doesn't want to get jumped as he is a saving hero. That's sort of the uh, sort of obvious, but heroes like Dazzle and Oracle, not only do they now want to get jumped and bursted, but they don't want to have be forced to use their defensive spells on them. And so Aoi just sort of running at the Oracle, forcing him to use his W on himself, and you know buying enough time for MSS to get the Chrono on the side, and then you know on two of the heroes. So not really an easy choice, as both of them would have died if they ulted him. So forcing the Oracle into a defensive position, forcing him to use spells on himself, and then. Not really anything else coming out of the fight as the Slark went on the right side of the fight as well, going on the Ogre, but since most of the heroes were on the left, the Batman had already used Lasso and the Pudge, sort of in a weird position as well. Ogre okay. just TP'd out and kept the gem, so nothing coming of the Slarks jumping on the support. Well, they tried to go for a cheeky little play with an Infest Bomb Ogre just lumbering in, but there was a sentry to scout his invisible, corpulent form. So they'll back out in the end. Roshan, probably three to four minutes out at least. Could be as much as like seven-ish. Well, top lane, do you see Envy going to work on Z Freak? He's got an arrow available. He hangs onto it for now. Z Freak can, might go for that deny attempt, and he tries, but it ain't gonna happen. Envy collects the kill. And Envy now the leader in net worth, just barely outstripping AUI. They almost find a counter kill here, but even that is denied. Can't get the lasso off. NP moving under cover of Moonlight Shadow going in deeper. No radiant vision of this maneuver. This is a, a good attack vector for Envy. Yeah, I think the creeps did see him with that sentry though. They're on the high ground uh, near the tier two. So Envy spotted out. 
pushing out this mid lane still, but cancel may actually get caught. And Envy suddenly in the middle of nowhere. That's the Aegis once. Justin getting bashed though. MSS already created the Chronosphere and he is going to get that kill on Justin. Cancel just waiting on the high ground, unable to get involved. NP marching down mid while AUI 2000 chills in the tree line. They did use the Chronosphere for that initiation as AUI tries to open wounds Moo. He TPs away to freedom, but also just running for dear life, not controlling the map, not playing offense. And Pierre just pulling away with this one. Now up by almost 12,000 gold and rising. Just consistent, stable play all around. Yeah, Envy with the blink as well as 3k gold on top of that as well. So if he's going to go for that E blade, we'll have it reasonably soon. Has enough money for the Eagle Song. Cool. Uh, I thought E might have gone for that uh, arrow on a cancel, but blinking into the trees, getting away. E thought he blinked the other way, just barely escaping. Had no mana as well. So if he, they had gotten found, him, or if they had found him, then he definitely would have gone down. Well, not looking super promising here for Complexity. Well, grab the Aether Lens for the Pudge of Z-Freak, who's still searching for those those hooks and those setups. And I guess that is something that, you know, we haven't talked too much about, is there really isn't great setup for the Pudge. The only reliable initiation is the, the Lasso. But, you know, when I when I saw uh, MVP pick Pudge, it was with Kunkka, with OD, you know, heroes that just make it really easy to time the hook and ensure that your opponents can't actually walk away or easily sidestep them. That's that's certainly not the case here. Yeah, also both of his cores, his initiators, the Slark and the Ursa, melee heroes obviously, so right up uh, on next to the hero, so very likely you accidentally hook your core instead of the enemy whenever they do go on them, unless you move out of the way and then you're not really hitting on that during that time period, so like you said, really just not a great punch game other than the fact that there's a void and you can try to hook people out of chrono, but much easier said than done in these chaotic fights where MP are jumping heroes at the chrono, jumping up, you know, trying to stomp the supports in the back line, the lifesteal are going on random heroes. It's very, very hard in actuality to get those to get those hooks off on the people chronoed and turn the fights around. Alright, this could be a big fight top brewing. This complexity do have five heroes and they get a scan. They have positive information that NP are in the that top lane. Ancient Black Dragon <laughs> just comes marching down the lane. Man, it's fast. 484 move speed. And just gets... Wow. Oh, no! Oh, a good save there by Swindles. That could have been an absolute disaster. Justin does get caught out, but they're able to turn this around. Still, though, it's not looking great for Moo as he's already committed his own last. So has to jump away. AUI continues to surge forward. Three-shotting Swindles and bringing him down. And meanwhile, elsewhere, a bubble on the Ursa who died almost as soon as it got deployed. Now MSS in pursuit. They're going to slow down Justin. They're going to get the bash. The hook won't connect because he got bashed. He couldn't walk away. On top of all that, it looks like a gem was dropped. Now a fourth kill. Z Freak down as well. He gets the to die again for whatever it's worth. But my god. That's now two gems for NP. and It's starting to feel like whether it was tilt or just superior play from NP, whatever that lingering effect of game one might be, uh, it has persisted into this game number two. Yeah, Aoi and Envy played that fight beautifully. The, um, they're both jumping in, then the Oracle forced, forced out, and then uh, Aoi tanking the Slark's pounce, so it'd go into Envy, and then immediately jumping into Envy, Envy moving over the stomp, clipping someone, and then Aoi immediately jumping back out, killing the Oracle was just really perfect. Um, targeting, you know, jumping on the right heroes at the right times, and blocking the pounce, jumping into E, then immediately out to break the leash. Just really, really nice play on the back lines of the fight. Yeah, so Envy will complete the E-Blade up to another 1,200 gold. He'll back down to the bottom lane. Other item pickups haven't talked too much about them, but MSS has a Diffusal Blade. Uh, SVG completed a pipe. Great choice versus the the Bat Rider and to some extent the Slark Spam and just to help you go high ground with full HP. Assault Caress about to fly out on AUI 2000. And that's a pretty big assortment of items to be grabbing at this stage. They're very difficult to kill. Yeah, 3k gold on the uh, Void as well, so picking up the Yasha almost has the Manta now. So only um, all the ultimate orb away. Very, very close to that as well. So going to make it even harder to lock down this Void, able to purge off the slows, get off the Napalm, another means of that after he's already used his Diffusal Blade. So 
and also just racking up the damage with the uh, the three illusions or the two illusions and the actual void inside the chrono. Combined with the bloodlust, void. A lot of games you'll see him falls behind on net worth and isn't really a damage dealer. More it's just a walking chrono. But this game very much a damage dealer to be feared. Yeah, once he gets Manta, he can kill almost anyone. As an arrow will find cancel bottom lane, he pops his ult, but the Chrono is dropped. Perfect position until Z Freak gets off the hook. That's what they need to turn these fights around. Too bad Envy is still fighting kills elsewhere. Shotguns down, cancels Ursa even after the hook, and now the Diffusal Blade going to work on Swindles. The item advantage might be too big. Void, though, in trouble. Overextending, MSS will go down, and now a decent fortune ends. On to Envy, they're going to look to chase here. Completed AC comes out for the life stealer. This is the time to fight if you're Complexity. They've already committed the lasso, but they do have Hook and they're gonna find another. They drag it SVG, they dismember him. Oh, but there was too many NP heroes. They just absolutely dogpile on top of Complexity's backliners, finding three kills and Justin into the tree line has the Echo Saber, goes for the TP out. Arrow's gonna miss and he will escape. Still though, extreme casualties while Cancel does not have a TP for 35 seconds. I don't think Colin to realize it though, and, or uh, sorry, that MP realized it. It looks like he may end up escaping, but that was a great fight too, right? They the Chrono only hits one, that hero gets hooked out, and they still end up losing three for one. Yeah, Mu ended up blinking in the edge of the Chrono, so it got chipped down a little bit. Uh, EE jumping in after he'd hooked out, like he's. Uh, oh wow, now that's all, folks. GG. And apparently, I believe Complexity has a BO5 to play uh, for another event. I think it's ESL1 right after this, if I'm not mistaken, so... Well... I mean, it's not even like, oh, well, we're tilted after game one, and, you know, we lose the series, but we can rest up and get fresh for tomorrow. They, Yeah, 35 minutes to go until that ESL1 best of five, I believe. This is not going to be great for morale and complexity land, I gotta tell you. Yeah, they, um, this is like, you know, one of many series they've dropped to NP, just consistently being just one step behind, maybe lacking experience, maybe just cleaner execution, some newer players in Cancel and Justin, and NP mostly, uh, mostly veterans with, uh, MSS being the newer player, but MSS really, really stepping out, playing extremely well on the team. Looks like he's been a professional for a long time, so NP really fitting together well and just continuing to show up and and just trounce complexity. Another 2-0. Well, the power of anime. This team has only dropped one series as a squad. Now, to be fair, they haven't faced the stiffest international competition. Uh, EG really the only like tr definite tier 1 team they've played. But uh, that is going to start changing over the next month. We've got a lot of big lands coming up. So with that, uh, Quinn, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, any last words here before we wrap up the broadcast? Uh, no, thanks for having me. It was uh, some good games. Have a good day, everybody. All right, guys. He's CCNC Dota. You can follow him on Twitter, CCNC Dota 2. Uh, of course, I'm LD. You can follow me at LD Dota. And be sure to follow Dota Pit at Dota Pit. That concludes today's NA broadcast. We've got one more best of five ahead of us. EG versus NP. Winner goes to LAN and joins some of the other teams that have already made it. And after that, the only qualifier remaining is the European one. There was a separate CIS qualifier. That will be held sometime after the Summit 